welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to discuss what we can do to help make Linux more popular. Over the years there have been various manifestos focused on Linux development and documentation. But to increase adoption I think what we now need is an end user manifesto and that's what this video is all about. The Linux operating system kernel was created by Linus Torvalds in 1991. And since that time, as we can track here on DistroWatch, hundreds of Linux distributions have been developed. Today, Linux is widely used in enterprise environments and in particular on web servers and supercomputers. However, in the purest sense, Linux adoption by end users remains relatively small. Indeed, as we can see here on StatCounter, in November 2023, Linux had a 3.21% share of a desktop computing marketplace, up from 2.77% in November 2022. It is, however, worth noting that Chrome OS, with a 3.73% market share, is based on Gen2 Linux. So currently, approaching 7% of desktop computer users are now running a Linux distro of some kind. If we take a look at StatCounter's figures for the operating system marketplace more broadly, we can also see that the most popular operating system is Android, which is also Linux-based. So it may be argued that technically Linux is already the most widely used operating system. However, in the rest of this video, I'm going to ignore the popularity of Android and Chrome OS to focus solely on the adoption of traditional desktop Linux distros. Today, there are several things holding back the wider adoption of Linux. Not least, there are too many distros, the choice is overwhelming for new users, and there are also still some technical limitations. For example, a lack of driver support for certain Wi-Fi and, and trackpad hardware on, on certain laptops, things like that. And these kind of things are clearly well beyond the control of most individual users. However, I still think there are things that individual users can do to try and make Linux more popular. First on my list, I would suggest that all current users need to be an advocate, not a gatekeeper. And this might sound like a strange thing to say, but uh, if, for example, we think about the world of Mac, you know, Mac users, Apple users, they all evangelize about the hardware and the operating system and how good it all is. And yet, not all Linux users do that. There are Linux users who are very, very keen to promote Linux to everyone around them, but there are also Linux users who want to, oh, no, no, it's not for you, it's very technical, you shouldn't do it. Um, and we only have to look at the comments on Linux videos here on YouTube or in Linux forums or websites and reviews and things like that, there is a minority, but a substantial minority of current Linux users who seem to think it's a good thing to say, no, no, this isn't for normal users, this is just for us. And that, that constrains adoption and that therefore lessens support for Linux. It's not good for any of us. So I think it's very important that we all think to ourselves whenever we leave a comment or something on anything to do with Linux, are we leaving a comment which will make people go, yes, I want to get involved with that, or, oh dear, that's a bit defensive, I wouldn't be involved. It's important we don't act as gatekeepers. Second on my list, I think it's equally important we're all tolerant of other users' choices, by which I mean other users' choices of distro, their choice of desktop. Um, again, Linux gets into really intense arguments sometimes, and that's good. You know, it's good we have lots of distros and people can run the version of Linux they want and they can pick the desktop they want. Some people like GNOME, some people like KDE, some people like Cinnamon or whatever it is, XFCE. Um, but we should respect that people have made the choice and it's reasonable. Rather than, as we see sometimes happening, people going, well, this is the best desktop. If you're not using it, you're an idiot. You need to relearn how you use a computer. You know, that sort of discussion takes place a lot. And again, that's putting up a barrier. You know, I think we should all be celebrating the fact if we use Linux, we do use Linux and other people use Linux and they use it differently to us. And that's fantastic. That shows the, the flexibility of Linux. The fact that it isn't about imposing control from the maker of the operating system, it's about the user having control. So 
let's all have a little bit of tolerance about the fact that whilst someone else might run Linux differently to us, that's fine. We can all be happy about that and we can all be proud to be Linux users. Third on my list, and kind of related, I think we all do need to accept that many people cannot currently use Linux. And this is sad, but it is true. And again, this leads to lots and lots of debate. You know, the people who say, you can do everything you like on Linux. And to a certain extent, that is true. You know, anything you want to do on a computer, there is a way to do it on Linux. But that doesn't mean right now, we all have the option and the flexibility to do everything we'd like to do on Linux, or at least to do it as easy as we can, most obviously in Windows. You know, not least, we do not have at the moment the Adobe suite for Linux. Uh, we do have lots of good Office packages, but we don't have a locally installable version of Microsoft Office. We can use the online version, but it's still not quite the same. And so there are, for many of us, good reasons why we can't use Linux. Some companies don't let people do it, you know, certain bits of software only available for Windows, all that type of stuff. So I think we also need tolerance for the fact that many people are running a mixed environment and have to run a mixed environment. I boot Linux every morning. It's the first operating system I start with in the day. It's often the last one I finish with, but in the middle I will have run Windows most of the time if I'm doing video editing, because whilst I could edit in DaVinci Resolve perfectly happily, I don't have an alternative to Adobe After Effects, a layer-based compositor. I've looked and looked and looked. I keep looking, but I don't at the moment. There are node-based compositors, but they're not quite as good as, as After Effects in terms of layer-based. And still there isn't a really good alternative to Photoshop. Recently, I have been doing a lot of work in, in, in Linux and um, using th things like GIMP um, for reasons because I've been away from some systems I normally use. And it's worked. And it's been slower. And it's been, uh, you know. So um, I think we do have to accept that there are very good reasons some people can't use Linux. And they're therefore not trying to be difficult and say, I want to use Windows. I'd rather do everything I did in Linux. But at the moment, I can't do it. We will get there. And we have to be tolerant of that fact, put it as part of a debate, rather than dismissing people when they say, I can't use Linux. Yes, you can, you're an idiot. They're not an idiot. It's because there are technical reasons, practical reasons, that right now we can't all go straight to Linux. Fourth on my list, I think it's very important that those of us who do run Linux spread the word about how Linux has improved. So often I see comments here on YouTube when I do a Linux distro review and people go, oh, Linux is rubbish. I tried it 10 years ago and there weren't proper drivers or whatever it, well, their complaint was. And it's like, yeah, it's improved a bit. You know, there are a lot of urban myths around about how things don't work in Linux, about driver support. OK, I said at the start of this, there are still some driver issues. There are. But lots of things are now sorted. You know, for a lot of standard day to day computing, Linux works very well indeed. And you don't have to mess around in the terminal. You've got beautiful graphical desktops, lots of distros really well suited for people coming across from Windows. And yet there are people with perceptions based upon what Linux was like a long while ago. So I think it's important for those of us who use Linux a lot to go, yes, it's better than it was. If you've not tried it in the past few years, have another go. You may be pleasantly surprised. Fifth on my list, I think it's also important that we separate the FOSS crusade from the use of Linux. And if you're not aware, FOSS stands for Free Open Source Software. And a lot of people are aware of the fact that Linux was created to be a free operating system. That was part of the initial reason for doing it, and, that, and that's cool. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing if there are paid distros, or if there are bits of software running on Linux that, um, again, you pay for. You know. The idea that everything on every operating system can get to a point where it's created by someone for free and all the intellectual capital, all the actual code, everything is opened up, that's not realistic. You know, I, I struggle with the fact that people still complain that, for example, NVIDIA, who've now got drivers available for Linux, but they aren't open source. Why should they be? You know, there's, there's no reason they have to be. There is a good argument, I suppose, about everything should be free and open source and everyone can see what's going on and that's a great idea. But that surely is an entirely separate debate to should more people, can more people, would it be a great idea if more people were using Linux? And I do think we've got to the point now where clearly the FOSS argument hasn't worked. Because as we saw in the figures at the start of this video, still a very small percentage of people run Linux. I think it's now time to say 
fast development, and of course that's not just Linux, you can run free open source software on Windows and Mac and everything else and anyway, but I think we need to start saying, over here, that's cool, it's great, there's lots of free stuff on Linux, it's great, most Linux stuff is free, but, you know, if Adobe tomorrow said, we're going to put our suite, Premiere Pro and uh, After Effects and Photoshop and all that onto Linux and we're going to charge for it normal way, that would be a fantastic thing, not a terrible thing, but it wouldn't make some of the people on, on, on the FOSS side of things you know, very happy. You know, I think it's a good thing, for example, that Debian has finally decided to include all the, all the closed source uh, multimedia codecs and things as an option when you install the operating system. We need that stuff, it makes it work. Linux exists in a context, and that context is that most software and a lot of drivers and this type of stuff is not free open source. And that really shouldn't be a thing that, that stops Linux adoption. I, 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 I like to see more people using Linux as they're getting more popular, FOSS is great, but it's a, it's a different debate, at least the way I see it. Sixth on my list, and related to what I just said, I think we should all try to campaign for Linux versions of major applications. Without doubt, Linux is held back, as I've said already, by a lack of major applications being available. You know, if we just got the Adobe suite, you know, if we just had Photoshop and Premiere, etc., and we had also Microsoft gave us Office on Linux, those two alone would make a massive difference to those people I was talking about earlier who can't move or fully move across to Linux. And um, personally, I'm glad to see there is progress being made. You know, for me, the reason I can't do everything in Linux comes back to Adobe After Effects and Photoshop, as I mentioned, but it also comes back to the fact I rely on a 3D modeling package and rendering package called Lightwave. And Lightwave has just had a change of ownership and next year, 2024, Lightwave is going to have a Linux version. And that for me is that, wow, that's going to make it possible for me to move more of my activity in the Linux direction. And so we can all be advocates in terms of trying to say to, to companies, can we have a Linux version of XSplit? And of course, it's a chicken and egg because when there aren't that many people using Linux, there's less reason for companies to do a Linux version. Um, but when it goes up and there's more people using it, they will, you know, it, it goes around, doesn't it? But uh, let's be advocates. Let's try to campaign for companies to create Linux versions of our favorite, our most important applications. Finally, at number seven on my list, just to note, I think it's important that we all try to give back where we can. Just because we can download our favorite daily driver distro and use it for free, doesn't mean we shouldn't make some sort of contribution, because if no one makes contributions, then they've got to run, even if they don't want to be paid for their labors, they've got to run servers and all the infrastructure and test things out. You know, it costs money to make and deliver free software. And we're, we're back to the FOSS stuff, I know. But um, it's not a bad idea to be able to give some support, if you can, to your, your, your favorite Linux distro, um, just to help it along, you know, and I think, Again, it's about signaling that in the market, and whether we like it or not, Linux, even if it is, a lot of it is free, is part of a marketplace, there has to be something that oils the wheels and, and keeps things going. We, we clearly need to have more investment in major distros. So, you know, I think the way Linux will have to go probably is we have more and more focus on fewer and fewer distros, and those distros need the development time and, and resource, and that's, that's going to come from somewhere, and ultimately it's got to come from the user base. Anyway, that is my end user Linux manifesto. Just a set of points about what we can be doing, what we can be thinking about to try and get more people using Linux and in turn to try and get Linux better supported. And it comes down to what we say, what we type in comments when we're, we're, we're on social media and out on, on the internet. Everything has an impact on how people perceive Linux. And guess what I'm really saying here? We want to improve the perception of Linux and we want to have, whilst we still have good debate about what's right and wrong and what we all use, that, that debate shouldn't become a barrier to other people joining us in the wonderful world of Linux. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.